it's time to replace the battery on this 2018 Honda Goldwing. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise Man's Garage. Today I'm gonna to show you how I'm gonna replace the battery on this 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now, you may be wondering why am I replacing the battery because the battery that came with my Honda Goldwing is still performing okay. Uh, no problem there, except that historically I have had problems with batteries lasting more than three years. I have no indication that the battery that came with the motorcycle is about to fail. I'm just doing this kind of as a preventative measure. It's just kind of the thing I've always done. I've, I have had batteries fail on gold wings in the past, usually around the two and a half to three and a half year mark. It's been about three and a half years now for this gold wing. So I think it's time. Now, there is a lot of controversy about the Honda Goldwing batteries. I know that in the 2021 models, a lot of people got brand new motorcycles with brand new batteries and the batteries were basically failing right out of the box. Honestly, I don't know how many that was happening with. I don't know if it was hundreds of Goldwings or dozens of Goldwings. I just know that social media kind of blew up and there was a lot of talk about uh, the batteries failing on the, or the OEM batteries failing on these gold wings. So it's, uh, and by the way, before I go any farther, I want to kind of mention what's going on here. Uh, I have a bandage on my nose. I had some dermatological work done yesterday. Uh, I didn't get in a fight or anything like that. So it just, uh, I, I have a little bandage covering up the, uh, the spot that he worked on. I know there's controversy about the batteries on the gold wing and uh, I got an email yesterday from Robert, uh, one of my subscribers and one of my video customers. And Robert mentioned that Chris Caliente has just put out a video uh, where he replaced the battery on his 2021 Goldwing with a Duracell battery. Now, if you're not familiar with Chris's channel, I'll put a link down in the description. You may want to check out that video. I'll go get the link to it and put it in the video. Um, and I believe Robert said he used a Duracell battery, which uh, I have looked at. I actually considered purchasing the Duracell before I got my new battery. And uh, no problem. I, I don't know anything about the Duracell. I've never used one before. I'm sure they're fine batteries. And there are several different brands of batteries, aftermarket batteries, that will work with your Honda Goldwing. Uh, However, it's important to understand there's only about three manufacturers of batteries uh, that are sold in the U.S. That, that a lot of these aftermarket batteries, they all come from the same factories anyway. Johnson Controls is one of the biggest uh, manufacturers of batteries, and I'm not exactly sure who manufactures the batteries that are in the Honda Goldwing. So I know you're anxious to see which battery I've chosen to go with, and I have chosen to go with the factory OEM UASA battery. All I know is I've used UASA batteries for many, many years uh, on previous Honda Goldwings and they've always performed pretty well. Now, I usually have to replace them after about three years, but uh, that's been true of other batteries I've had in cars and you know other vehicles too, so it's not just UASA batteries. I don't know if it's because of the heat here in Texas or what causes it. And I know I'm going to get a ton of comments from you guys saying, oh, I've got a battery, so I've had it for 15 years. And that's great. I'm glad that you're having such good luck with your batteries. I've just never had that same luck. And the problem is when these batteries fail, uh, they tend to do so almost unannounced. You'll go out one day, you'll be at a restaurant, you'll go out and start your bike, and the bike just won't start. So I didn't want to take a chance. I just want to go ahead and replace it. Now, this is a glass mat battery. It is a sealed battery. So it doesn't have any liquids that you have to uh, top off or uh, acids or anything like that. It is the uh, glass mat. You could go with the lithium ion batteries. And the advantage to those batteries is they're very lightweight. This battery is pretty heavy. I'd say it probably weighs 10 or 12 pounds. I don't know, it's, it's pretty heavy. But there have been some concerns with those lithium ion batteries. Um, 
there's advantages and there's disadvantages, and it's more than I really want to get into in this video. There's some great videos on YouTube that compare lithium ion to uh, glass mat batteries. There's also a good article in one of the old Ryder magazines where they talk about this. I'm choosing to go with what came with the Goldwing. I will keep the battery that I pull out of this Goldwing, and I'll keep it on a battery tender just in case. In case I got one of those bad ones that everybody's talking about, I can always put the original battery back in until I go a different direction. But today I'm going to show you how I replace the battery in this 2018 Goldwing. The procedure should be the same for any 2018 to 2021, maybe even 22 Goldwings. Uh, so I'll just show you my little tips and tricks. I'm going to try to do it without taking off the seat. You can do it. And uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. And why are we wasting time? Let's just get started. Now, while I remove the left side cover to get access to the battery, let me remind you that you can support Cruise Man's Garage by purchasing my Honda Goldwing Maintenance video series. We have videos for the 2001 to 2017 and for the 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. I'll put a link in the description below. The Goldwing battery is located underneath the left side cover, so I'm going to remove that here. You'll notice a couple of cables coming out through the side cover. Uh, these go to my Skosh battery jumper and also to the battery tender. So I'm going to pull those out of the cover first. Now on my battery, you'll notice I have multiple things connected to both the negative and the positive terminal. Not only do I have the motorcycle ground and positive cable, but also cables that go to my power accessory hub and this Skosh jump starter. Replacing the battery is easier if we remove this plastic passenger footrest cover shown here. I'm going to do that first. This plastic cover is held in place with a single 10 millimeter bolt shown here. It's just in front of those two fuses. There are also two plastic body clips toward the saddle bags, and then underneath there is a 3 millimeter Allen bolt. Now I'm going to use a small pick to punch in on the center of these body clips. You can also use a small Phillips screwdriver to punch in on these. And this is how you release the body clips. And once you've done that, you can usually use your fingernail to just kind of get underneath and flick out those body clips. This is what the plastic body clips look like when they're removed. And you can reset these body clips so that you can reuse them by just pushing the post up from the bottom until it protrudes from the head of the clip as shown. Now, using a 10 millimeter socket and an extension, I'm going to remove that 10 millimeter bolt that's at the front of the cover. Now I'm going to use a 3 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the 3 millimeter Allen bolt on the underside of the cover. Make sure the passenger footrest is folded down and then you could begin to wiggle this cover out of place. It may take a little bit of fiddling but it will come loose and just pulls right out. I like to do a little cleanup along the way just to clean the frame rail and just the surrounding area just to keep uh, my hands and everything else from getting too dirty. Next we need to remove this retaining bracket that sits in front of the battery and it's held in place with a single 10 millimeter bolt kind of up underneath the seat. You can see it here. I also want to remove this connector. I'm using some hemostats. You could also use needle nose pliers just to crimp on the ends of that little uh, plug that holds it in place. And I'm actually going to use a small bungee cord just to kind of hold this up and out of the way. I just don't want it flopping around while I'm trying to replace the battery. You can find these miniature bungee cords at any auto supply or probably even at Walmart. They come in super handy for little tasks like this.
Now I'm going to use my 10 millimeter socket with an extension to remove that bolt at the top of the bracket. There's a small tab at the bottom of the battery box that holds this bracket in place and you can kind of move the bracket to the left and get it out from underneath the seat and the little bracket will come right off. When removing a battery you always want to remove the ground terminal first. So I'm going to unscrew the little screw that goes into the terminal and I'm going to pull it out at, along with all of the uh, terminal connectors that go to that terminal. Since I don't want the ground wire getting in my way while I'm replacing the battery, I'm going to use another one of those bungee cords just to kind of hold it out of the way. You could hook it onto a footrest or I'm just using a part of the fairing, but you can just hook it onto anything over there. And here's the bungee cord that I have holding that little connector out of the way using one of my saddlebag latch hooks. And now we're ready to remove the positive connectors that go to the positive terminal. Just unscrew it. And now we're ready to remove the old battery. It helps to kind of turn it toward the left, to your left I should say, and pull the left edge out first and it will slip right out of the battery box. And once again I'm going to use this opportunity to clean out some of the dust and debris and stuff that collects in the bottom of that battery box just because when are you ever going to have the opportunity to get this cleaned out. So you also uses these little kind of brass looking nuts and these little nuts slip in behind these mounting posts or these terminals. I don't like this system but that's just the way they work. So you basically slide this nut in here and then you use the bolt uh, to attach your uh, terminals. Now the reason I don't like this is because these things sometimes fall out when you're trying to get this bolt threaded in. They're not lined up correctly and it can be a real pain in the butt to get these to line up. Why they didn't just build the threads into the terminal, I'm not really sure, but they didn't. So there's one of these nuts that goes on each end. Uh, you don't want to tip the battery up this way or that little nut will fall out. So you just have to be aware of that uh, when you're putting this new battery into the battery box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this in, uh, this end first, and the first thing we'll do is attach this positive, I'm not sure if you can see it here, here's the positive cable. Uh, we'll attach that first along with our uh, power accessory hub terminal and the terminal for our uh, battery charger. Okay, we're just gonna kinda set it in there at an angle and we will try to get this all lined up before we get it back into the box here. It's a tight fit. But it goes and I think I've got my terminal in position almost, not quite, because this little rubber cap can cause you grief. So I'm going to go ahead while this is kind of sticking out. It's not all the way back in the box. I can still push it back about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and try to attach these terminals first, or these um, uh, cables, and then uh, we can worry about the, the ground. So I'm just putting these two together like this. I'm going to put this on here. And the reason I'm doing this, this goes to my Pathfinder LED power accessory hub. And this goes to my battery tender, which also is my jump starter cable from um, Skosh. So we'll go ahead and see if I can. Uh-oh, look at that. My terminal came off of the wire to my... Pathfinder accessory hub. That's not good. I'm going to have to put this terminal back on, see if I can't get it crimped down good enough to hold. I use my wire crimping tool here 
built into my vice grip and I clamp down on this. You can see it's on there pretty good now. So I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about this coming off. So let's see now if we can get these to go on with my new screw that came with the kit or with the battery, I should say. This is the hardest part is to get this positive to go on because number one, I've got two extra terminals here I'm, I'm uh, adding, but also because of that, that little threaded nut back there is a pain to deal with. So we'll see if we get lucky. Sometimes you just get lucky and it goes right in, which it did this time. Perfect. Let's go ahead and push this battery back into the battery box. So now it is fully seated. And then we're going to attach the ground cable from my power accessory hub, my Pathfinder power accessory hub, and my ground cable from my Skosh um, charger slash uh, jumper, jumper cable, and the ground that comes from the Goldwing, which I have tied up over here on a bungee cord. And I will now bring it back into play. And sometimes you get a little spark when this uh, first time it goes in. So there we go, it's on. That looks good. I like to just go ahead and stack these up, have them ready to go all at the same time. And then just kind of push them all in together using my screwdriver. To me, that just seems to work a little bit easier. Let's just get it on there. See if we can hit those threads. Got it. Okay, let's turn the bike on and see if we have juice. We do. The bike is on, the lights are on. So we do have power. And it looks like my little voltmeter over here is showing uh, 12.1 volts. Now, when I put this bracket back on, I could actually put these cables under the bracket. I think there's probably room. They'd be tight, but they would go. But I don't wanna do that because if I wanna take these off for any reason, I don't wanna to have to take this bracket back off. So let's just go ahead and slip our little tab up in there and you kind of rotate this over to the left side of the seat. You can kind of pull out on the bottom of the seat as you pull it under there, and it will go right up in there. And now we'll just get our 10 millimeter socket and we'll reattach that bolt. we can undo this and reattach this. There's just a little hole back here that this pops into just to hold it in place. One thing you do want to make sure of is that both of these tabs where these uh, body clips go are on top of the black saddlebag plastic. These both should be on top. This one will actually go underneath if you're not careful and you'll never get the body clip back in. So both of these uh, tabs on this piece here, this silver piece, need to be on top of the black plastic. First, I'm going to reattach that three millimeter Allen bolt on the bottom front edge of this plastic cover. Then I'm gonna replace that 10 millimeter bolt that goes just in front of those little fuses that are next to the battery. You could actually remove those fuses from the holder. Uh, it would make it easier to get your uh, socket in there, but you can bend everything out of the way enough to get that bolt back in place without removing those fuses. 
And don't forget to replace the two little plastic body clips that go at the rear of that cover, kind of toward the front of the saddlebag. I'm just popping down the posts to lock them into place. Now, while I replace the side cover on my Goldwing, I would like to remind you that if you're passionate about motorcycles, please take a second to subscribe to our channel. And if you liked this video today, don't forget to click the thumbs up. It really does help the rankings of our channel. And you can continue to support Cruise Man's Garage channel by purchasing our Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. I'll put links in the description below. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.